There's a dance that's in your chair You've given us the bed Now we're stirring up the head Bring the rain Good morning. Oh, good morning. Good morning. How many of you think you've reached the limit of your experience with God? No way. <laughs> well, if you do, if you happen to, I can assure you, you ain't right. <laughs> okay, there's always more. And that's my thought for today, that with God there's always more. No matter how far away from God you are, or how near to God you are, no matter how far you've walked with Him, or how long you've spent time with Him, there's always more for you to travel, it's always further for you to go. There's more of him, always more of Him for you to know and recognize and to experience. So whatever your position with God today, whether you know Him or not, there's always more. And that's what we're going to share today. The thought that there's always more. So if you don't feel close to God, just... Draw near to Him. If you feel very close to God, get closer still. Because it's always more. Do you believe in Jesus? Yes. Well, there's more. Do you, or have you accepted Jesus as your Savior and your Lord? Yes. There's more. All right. Have you received the Holy Spirit? There's more. Do you understand the Bible? <laughs> well, there's more. There's plenty of it for you to grow into. Have you exercised any of the gifts of the Spirit? Yes, yes some of you. Well, there's still more. And those of you who haven't as yet, well, there's more. Okay? And do you know God? Yes. Yeah, you're not quite so sure. Because there's still more to know of Him, even if you know Him very well. Have you seen into heaven? Some people have. I know someone who has. Some of you have. Well, there's still more. There's always more. And that's the thought I want you to take hold of. That whatever your experience of God has been, it's not finished yet. And whatever your experience of God is today, tomorrow will be different. Because there's more. Right. Now in the Passover service, well the Passover is the last supper that Jesus took even before he died. Alright? Where he died for the sins of the world. Jesus took hold of the words of the Passover service, and that's where we get our communion from. It's from the Passover. And in the Passover, there's a little song called the Day Yenu. And it means, that would have been enough for us. And what it is, is a little song that lists all the things that God has done, which you can read about in the Old Testament, for the Jewish Hebrew people, and they're saying that after each one, is, they're just marveling that after the first experience of God, there's another one. And then there's another one. And then there's another one. A few of the lines of the song go like this. And this is after he drowned the Egyptians in the sea, all right? They crossed the Red Sea. And then they end up in the wilderness. He said, had he provided for our needs in the wilderness for 40 years, and not fed us with manna, that would have been enough. Had he fed us with manna, and not given us the Sabbath, that would have been enough. Had he given us the Sabbath, and not brought us to Mount Sinai, where the Ten Commandments came from, that would have been enough. Had he brought us to Mount Sinai, and not given us the Torah, which is the Scriptures, that would have been enough. But he goes on, and he goes on, and he goes on, always providing more and adding 
to the experience of God that the people have had so far. And that's why the one just didn't recognize today. That when you walk with God, there is always more. You cannot reach the limit of God. No matter how holy you may think you are, you've got a long way to go. We all have, all right? Just think for a moment, if Jesus was the man today instead of 2,000 years ago and in our midst. And we would say, oh look, he's touch teaching us wonderful things about God we never thought of before. Then you might see him healing and say, hey, that's fantastic too. And then you see a miracle, hey, that's wonderful. <coughs> he, isn't it wonderful that we got this man with us? And then what does he do? He dies for our sins so that we don't have to. He said, hey, that, that's fantastic. Who, would, who among us would do that for us? And then he goes and rises from the dead. And he promises us a resurrection as well. And he said, hey, this is wonderful. More and more. And then he goes up to heaven and sends the Holy Spirit down. Hey, there's more. There's more. You see, it, it never stops. Whatever you felt about God in your life, there's still more. There's still more. Now in the Old Testament, in the first book of Kings, chapter 17, you can look it up if you like, when you get home, just remember, 1 Kings 17, that there's a story there involving the prophet Elijah. And the name Elijah means God is himself. Okay, God is himself. And there, it is famine time. And Elijah, this man of God, is told by God to go to a certain place, and God has commanded the ravens to feed him. So Elijah goes, and when he gets there, every morning and every evening, the ravens bring him bread and meat. Then the famine gets a bit deeper and God tells Elijah to go and visit a widow whom he has commanded to feed him. The only problem is the widow doesn't know about it yet. She hasn't heard God clearly yet. But God has fixed that this widow will feed Elijah. When Elijah gets to her and asks her for some bread, she says this, as surely as the Lord your God lives, I do not have any bread. Only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I'm gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. That's her <coughs> expectation. What does Elijah say to her? <coughs> make me a piece of bread first and bring it to me. He said to her, do not be afraid, go home and do as you have said. But first, make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me and then make something for yourself and your son for this is what Jehovah, the God of Israel says. The jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day of Jehovah sends rain on the land. There's a promise to this lady. She thought she had nothing. The only thing left for her was death. But she discovered something. With God, there's always more. So out of that little supply of flour and oil, she had enough to live on until the famine was over. That's what happened. Well, in the second book of Kings, chapter 4, there's another prophet, Elisha. Or Elisha. That means God is Savior, his name. And he is one who followed on from Elijah. And when Elijah was taken up to heaven, Elisha says, I want a double portion. 
from your anointing. And that's what he got. And he responds to another widow who is deeply in debt. She's just been widowed, she has two sons and deeply in debt and had no resources except a small jar of oil. Elisha said, go round and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Do not ask for just a few. Now I want you to register that. Do not ask for just a few. Do not limit God. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. God does a lot of miracles in private. Alright? Pour oil into all the jars and as each is filled, put it to one side. She left, it, left him and shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her and she kept pouring. Then all the jars were full. She said to her son, bring me another one. But he replied, we don't want you left. We've used them all up. Then the oil stopped flowing. She went and told the man of God and he said, go, sell the oil to pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what's left. She only had one small jar of oil. But with God, there was more. There was enough oil in that one small jar to pay all her debts and then to live on. Now I've got a jar here. Okay. It hasn't got oil in it. It's got water. But I've got some cups. And I'm going to empty this jar into this cup. Okay. Then, according to God's word, I can empty the jar into this cup. And then, I've got another cup. So I can empty this jar into this cup. But the funny thing is, there's more in this jar than in these cups. These cups will not fill the Go back into the jar again. If I pour that one in, that's gone. Pour that one in, it overflows. Pour that one in, it overflows even more. A jar that is filled to overflowing with a constant flow as long as I have a space to use it. Just like the lady in the in the scripture as long as there was an empty vessel there was always more yeah. are you an empty vessel yeah. not empty enough maybe but if you are an empty vessel God can pour water the water of the Holy Spirit into you you see there's no limit to what the Holy Spirit can do for us. There's no limit to what the Holy Spirit will do for us yeah. other than what we let him do. If we run out of emptiness, if we're so full of ourselves there's no room for him, if we run out of emptiness, he cannot fill us. But if we acknowledge our emptiness to Him and we have a receptive heart that is able to receive what He offers to us, He's always got more. Yeah. Just like my bottle. There's always more. <laughs> In the New Testament, we have the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. That's a, a nice little miracle. Jesus gets hold of five small loaves, about the size of bats, you know, a little bread roll, five small barley loaves and two fishes. And then he feeds what the Bible tells us is 
5,000 men. Why he didn't feed the women, I don't know. <laughs> but what it is interpreted as, that with these 5,000 men, there were also all the women and children, and they were all fed from the five loaves and the two fishes. All right? And this is what he says. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled twelve baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. I don't know how big the baskets were, but there were twelve of them. And there were only five loaves to start with. Not even enough for one for each basket. But you see, out of those five loaves, there were twelve baskets of pieces left over, surplus to what all those people needed to be fed on. They'd eaten all they needed, but yet there was still what? More. And that's the lesson for us today. There's still more. Now, there's a little benediction in Ephesians chapter 3, which I'll read to you. Now, to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now to him who is what? Able to do immeasurably more than what? All that we can ask for or even imagine. So I like to say, if you can imagine it, that's not it. Yeah. <laughs> but it's more than you can imagine. Yeah. Okay? So whatever your imagination, how far or how limited your imagination stretches, know that that's the, not the limit. Not with God. He's able to do immeasurably more. That means you cannot limit how much more he can do than we can imagine. And it is according to what? The power that is at work within us. That means you are able to do immeasurably more. Something unexpected. Okay. Do you like unexpected things? Good. Any of you here who pray for the sick who doesn't have any anointing oil? Sit around now. One, I've got two here you can have. Something unexpected. Myrrh anointing oil. And one right back there. Good. Myrrh, something unexpected. God is always able to give a blessing beyond your expectation. Okay? And that oil is myrrh. So, one of the gifts that the wise men brought to Jesus. So there's, whenever you start thinking that you've reached the limit, life has got a bit stale for you, start talking to God about it. Because there's always more. Now, many people will progress up through the ranks at work or something, and when they feel they've achieved their goal, when they reach a certain level, people do the same with God. So whenever you reach the, get, the level you expect, the goal you have, God then says, hmm, okay, get hungry. And he makes you hungry for something more. Because he always has more. When you've arrived or feel you've arrived at the fulfillment of your desire in life, he gives you a hunger for more. Why? Why? Because there's always more. Even in my bowl. There's always more. <laughs> now, to apply this to your life, some of 
you will help others. Others of you will need their help. In fact, all of us help and need help from time to time. What is your resource? What is your resource? It's that which is within you. And God is infinite. You know what infinite means, don't you? It means you can never get to the end of it. You know, there's no beginning, no. You can never reach the end of it. Because there's always more. So think about it. God is in you. What is Jesus' prayer? John 17. He prays that all those who believe in him because of the apostles' teaching, which would be one reason you're here. All those who believe in him should be one. Then he says, as we are one. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, one. You and me, I and you, they in us, us in them. Totally at one, God, the Holy Trinity, and you. Individually and together. May they be one, as we are one. So what do you have in that relationship with God? You have an infinite resource within you to meet your own needs and the needs of others. Because within you there's what? <laughs> okay. Now Jesus was at a well in Samaria. Yeah? He asked the lady for a drink. The disciples frowned on a bit that this was a lady he shouldn't have been talking to. Not there's anything wrong with her, but she was Samaritan and he was Jewish and then he didn't get on. And he got into a conversation with her which became deep and penetrating. And at one point he said, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. You, you, a spring of water welling up inside. That's you. Whenever you, whenever you need God's help, there is a well that you can draw from. Where is it? It's inside. And there's a well of water springing up. But you've got to drink it first. You've got to drink it. You've got to drink hold, take hold of Jesus and what he gives. And then that spring of water leads up to eternal life. Do you know what, he, what Jesus' definition of eternal life is? in John 17 verse 3 to know God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent yes. eternal life is total knowledge of God the Father and God the Son and it comes about by the power of the Holy Spirit at work within us just like that widow with Elisha as long as there was an empty vessel she could fill it. As long as there is a need, you can fill it. You can fill it. Because God is in you, if you believe in Him. And have given your life to Him. And accepted Jesus as your Savior. Salt the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And begin to exercise the gifts. That's what it's all about. A well of living water rising up. So whatever your need, whatever your empty jar, Jesus can fill it. Do you feel inadequate? Most of us do. Don't ask me to pray. I don't know. My prayers won't work. Well, they will. Okay? They will. It's the 
the neighbor sick? Go pray. We've got some oil now, two of you. The rest of you can get some olive oil. Go pray for the sick. You know, call upon Jesus first. Hey, Jesus, I'm going to pray for the sick. Will you well up within me, please, to bring healing to this person? <coughs> I've got problems. Will you sort out my problems with me? Will you well up within me? I'm having trouble handling my money. Lord Jesus, will you well up within me and give me the ability to cope? Remember that widow? In debt. She had one small resource, which she obeyed the word of God. <coughs> and her needs were met. You will always be able to pour into a need as you drink the water that Jesus gives. And that water is the Holy Spirit of God. So, hunger, thirst for the Holy Spirit. Hunger, thirst for more of God. Jesus said that the eternal life that he wishes to give to those who believe in him is to know God and Jesus Christ whom he has sent. He wants you to know more of him. He wants you to receive more from him. And, guess what? <laughs> There's always more. <laughs> Jesus said in Matthew 6 verse 33, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. There's the condition to all the more being within you. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Whatever your need is, call out to God first. Because in him there is always more. And he delights to share it with you. Okay, so if you have a need and seek prayer from one of Jesus' people, you can know they will always have a resource to fill your empty vessel of need. And you will find it in yourself as well if you come closer to God, come closer to Jesus, come closer to the Father. Come closer to the Holy Spirit and seek more of the presence of God in your life. So remember today, there's always more. So, if you are outside or deep within God's presence, if you are young in the faith or lived a lifetime with God, if you are in bad health or totally well, if you are unlearned or highly educated, if you are rich or poor, God has something for you today. Something that you have not known before. So let us seek his face and receive from him what it is that is ours at his hand today through his mercy and grace because of his love let us receive from him. So we're going to, I'm going to pray for you all now, alright, and the worship team are coming back up to take us through afterwards. But I want to pray that you all receive more something you haven't known before even something beyond your imagining alright because who would have thought I'd be here anyway it's not something I thought of years ago when I first candidated for the ministry I was told by some I did not have the intellectual capacity. I also know 
that the first time I gave an address of any kind, the only person who heard what I said was me. <laughs> The loudest I spoke, the voice travelled about here. You know, totally inadequate. Impossible. But God intervenes. Yeah. So let us pray, people. Let us pray. Um, I want you to hold out your hands as though you're expecting to receive something. All right? Some of you may even feel something land in your hands. Some of you may just feel a strange feeling. Some of you may not feel anything at all. But know in your heart that you are receiving something from God which you haven't known before. We only emerge in coming days. But know that there is always more in Him. So just hold out your hands as if you're going to receive. So Father, I just pray indeed that you pour out your Spirit upon these your people. Fill their hearts today with faith and love. Bless them with the gift of your presence, even now. And so, Father, I pray that you pour out your gifts across this congregation right now. For those who receive a gift of healing, Lord, I pray you will anoint them for healing every day. For those who you wish to work miracles, Lord, I pray for that anointing be given right now. For those who are called to proclaim your word, Lord, I pray that you give them that gift of proclamation right now. For those who need to know more of your love in their hearts, Lord, I pray you give them that gift right now. For those who need the gift of faith, Father, Father I pray that you give them that gift right now. Because, Lord, we know in you there's always more. So, Father, for those of us who do not quite know what we want from you. Lord, I just pray, give us more, Lord. More, Lord. Knowing that your heart's desire is to bless your people with gifts and the abundance. So send your anointing, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.